Good afternoon, everyone. Um, so I work at Honest B, and uh, my talk flows in very well with what Florian just discussed about monolithic applications. And oftentimes, uh, what you find is that as your application size grows bigger and the business requirements keep flowing in, certain parts of the application, um, you know, they just get bulky, and it becomes harder to change them. Uh, for various reasons. I mean, if you if you don't have a sophisticated system like Shopify does, and you know sometimes you have to wait longer for builds to run, deployments become slower. Uh, tests need to be, you know, you have to have a powerful set of test suite. And if you don't, if you don't feel confident about certain integration tests, uh, you know, surely you have to ha put in QA efforts and so on. Uh, but obviously, splitting up applications is not uh, something, it comes with additional responsibility. And there are certain uh, cons, you know, or rather certain ad additional like headaches that it brings along. So I don't want to get into whether you should or you shouldn't split it, split it up, because I think that's another topic altogether. But should you choose to do it, um, what are some of the good ways or what are some of the ways to think about it, especially from a development point of view, uh, not thinking about the deployment challenges involved in this process? So I'd first like to show you this diagram. And um, let's say you decide to split services into you know, different, um, you, you take a big service and you start taking out some of the, you know, some of the components of the service out. Um, there's various ways for these services to actually talk to each other. And one of the common ways is HTTP. Now, one of the issues uh, with services talking via APIs is that every single service is aware of the concern of the other service. So let me give an example. Uh, let's say you have a service that creates users, and uh, you also want to do this additional notification you know, logic, where every time a user is created, maybe you want to send a notification for verification of the user, or send out welcome emails, and so on. And notification itself is something that can be that is useful across your system, not just for users. So maybe you think about, hey, maybe I can separate out notifications into a separate service. Now, if you were making your two services contact each other via APIs, um, you know, the user creation service now has a contract that it needs to follow, and it needs to know that at some point when the user is created successfully, it has to send out, a, you know, an API call to another service. On the right, you have a slightly different approach to this. And uh, you may choose to use one or the other. Uh, it's not a complete black or white situation. But uh, the benefit of the second approach, for at least the example that I just spoke about, is that your user creation service only cares about creating a user. And once it's done with that, it pushes that event out into a message bus. And the services that actually care about anything to do with user creation decide to then uh, pick it up, pick up that event, and do certain things like sending out notifications and so on. So in a way, you're reducing the coupling between your services, and you're also separating the concerns of different services quite clearly when you uh, use such a system. So fundamentally, it's this uh, philosophy of fire and forget, where as a user creation service, I fire a message, and then I don't really care what happens. And then another service picks it up, and it processes it. And once it's done processing it, maybe it prints an acknowledgment back. And you know, if a service cares enough about it, they pick it up, and they continue with it. And that's how the flow continues. Now, there is various tools to do it. And once again, I wouldn't want to get into the debate, because everybody's use cases and situations may demand different tools. But let's say you choose to do it using Kafka, which is actually a highly scalable distributed tool. Uh, it provides a certain replication factor. So you know, it's highly reliable, and so on. So, been used by a lot of organizations. Uh, so um, for those of you who may not have worked with it, some of the terms, just before we get into uh, uh, a, a more deeper example, is a concept of a producer. So you have producers that are constantly um, you know, just publishing messages to the bus. And they're doing it in uh, a particular topic, which is basically you know, what, what are, if, if it's a user creation, maybe you have a topic called user and so on, right? And these topics are then divided into partitions. And the benefit of splitting things into partition is that it can be, it can exist across multiple machines. So it makes it highly you know, scalable. And then you can also have your consumers uh, subscribe to certain topics and read it simultaneously off a particular partition. So you can have multiple consumer processes that are running and that are simultaneously reading it. So it also gives you this whole notion of parallel processing of messages. So that's what makes Kafka highly superior and um, 
a really good choice uh, as a message bus. So some of the key terms are producers, not going too much into detail of you know, all the other stuff that happens in the background, but you have your producer, consumer, and your topic. And so let's talk about the simple use case that I spoke about in the beginning, which is a user creation and maybe just sending something as simple as like a welcome message uh, to the user saying, hey, thanks for signing up. So the first thing you want is a producer. And uh, the producer is the one, what we found out in our Rails application context is that oftentimes the events that you want to send out are linked to uh, database changes. So it could be an insertion to your database, or it could be an update to your database. And oftentimes, these are the events that you want to push to the message bus. There might be others, but these actually compose majority of the events that we wanted appli different applications to respond to. And so one way to do that is um, to have code to send out messages spread across your application. And um, that definitely brings around a, you know, a bit of duplication. So then fine, you, know, you bring it into callbacks in the models. Some of the things, you know, when, you, when you allow different developers to just add logic to send messages to Kafka based on certain events is that to an extent, you want to have certain contracts followed even when you publish things to Kafka. So for example, metadata, right? Um, maybe you want to have a timestamp included in every single one of your messages. Um, so where I'm driving at is that it does make sense to centralize the logic of sending the message itself and adding some of the metadata attributes. The contents and the topic of the message can be configurable, but some of the other factors around it remains uh, like a, you know, it's a similar logic across the base. So what does it look like in practice? So basically this is what we ended up doing. We, we created a concern that allowed, um, let me just show it to you what it looks like. So it just basically, is something that can be included inside your model. And uh, you just add a simple publish statement with arguments that are fundamentally arrays. Because you do uh, have situations where you want to publish multiple times from within the same model. So for example, when the user is creation, I want to send a message to a particular topic for user creation. And I want to use an existing serializer that decides what the format of the message is. And when the user is updated, maybe I want to only send a message conditionally if the phone number of the user is updated. And, and at that point, I want to have a different, like a message blob, which is you know, coded inside uh, based on the new attributes like the phone number, and so on. Right? So you can have an array of messages that get sent out for each of your, um, for each of your models. And that's how you have your first, you know, a simple producer where every single creation or update can be then published to the message bus. Now, as and when you're publishing messages, at some point, uh, you do want to pick up those messages and uh, process them and do something with them. Um, and that's where one of the libraries that we discovered is Karafka, which makes it really, really easy to set up a very simple and clean structure across your application where you basically use uh, you, you create a central configuration and you register a controller to a topic. So you can create applications which are actually having consumers consuming from multiple topics, so multi-topic applications in a way. And once you define this mapping, so you can see that it's actually just quite simple configuration. You can define your controller code. And I mean, it's advisable to keep your controller code uh, lean. Uh, so yeah, so what I've done here in this case is that I've just created a separate service to send out SMS in this case, and I'm just picking up the, uh, the, the, the phone number of the user as well as the name of the user from the message that was sent to the message bus. Uh, and that's it, and that's where your consumer logic is. So uh, I can show you a, a running example. Uh, I've been advised not to do demos and short talks because, you know, whatever has to go wrong, will go wrong, but I'm just going to do it anyway because I just want to show that it's actually really easy, at least from a development point of view. Uh, and the, you know, the barriers to do it is really little just because we have a really good ecosystem, uh, at least in Ruby, to do this. So, so this is my code that I was just talking about, and this is the, the, this is the application that basically uh, has the, you know, it's the same code that you just saw on the slides. So a little bit redundant. And then this is where your um, controller is, which is exactly the same logic. And um, when I go into my terminal, oops. Um, <laughs> all right. So what I have here is 
I have my Rails server running on one end, and then I also, on the right-hand side in this particular window, I have uh, my Karafka server running. So Karafka, just a bit of background, is that it takes the messages in the message bus and it pushes it into um, sidekick queues, and then you have sidekick workers that are basically picking those messages up and sending it to your controller, and the controller then processes the message. So the right-hand side is the Karafka server, and the left one is the Karafka worker. There's a few errors, and that's all my local environment configuration. It's not entirely normal, but I haven't bothered fixing it. Um, and then um, this is my sign-up form, right? So this is a simple sign-up form. Um, and what I'm going to do right now is I'm just going to create my, um, just add my phone number in, and then add my honestb email, and then just, you know, a password. And uh, here's my phone. <laughs> so I'm going to sign up. And ideally, I should get a message if all goes well. So there should be some logs which basically says that it's done processing. And just about any time now, there. So I got a message just now, which basically says, thank you for signing up. So um, what I'm trying to say is that from a development point of view, it's easy. There are deployment challenges. But for now, let's just leave that to the DevOps to take care of. And let's just focus on developing it. Thank you, everyone. Oh.